truly delighted to have you on Richard Mwenja exclusive. The month is November, the overload 2024. Such a distinct privilege to have your company with us on this show that is the only point of call on matters political and governance analysis. I'm Richard Mwenja, and today we're going to unpack conversations that are shaping Kenya's political and governance landscape. And who better to help me bring home such conversations than this renowned think tank? Former Minister, son of Chirangani constituency, Kipruto Arab Kiro. Yes. How are you doing today? Very well. You are well? I'm very happy. We, oh, because maybe you are looking at our President Donald Trump uh, no, thing no, no. in the air? <laughs> well, if he wins, we wish him well. Uh -huh. if, uh, of course, my preferred candidate was uh, Kamala Harris. Uh -huh. uh, not for many things, mm -hmm. but uh, she has not insulted any continent. Mm -hmm. Trump has been insulting us like nothing ever happened in Africa. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I don't think he has time even for those Americans. But because we've been prepared mm -hmm. as a society that is full of vengeance and hostility mm -hmm. and toxicity, many Americans are voting for him because of the rubbish he puts on others. Remember calling Costa Rica a floating cabbage. Really, how do you how do you how do you take that? Condescending but, uh, tone. Condescending, consid, cons, condescending attitude. Mm -hmm. At the same time, thinking that the rest of the world does not exist. America is part of the global uh, space, just like Kenya or any other place in uh, in the rest of the world. You've taken concern with the possible presidency of Donald Trump, and let's bring this home. Yeah. Uh, a few months ago, during the historic state visit uh, to the U.S. by President William Ruto, we saw a bag of goodie come out of it. One of them uh, was uh, us being designated as a major NATO ally by President Joe Biden. So in the event that, president, uh, Donald, uh, that Donald Trump becomes the 47th president of USA, what is the likely fate of that pledge from Joe Biden for us as a country? You know, in terms of foreign policy, the American nation mm -hmm. has a template a template on their foreign policy and not much will change just because either democrats or republicans have won mm -hmm. but as you know trump does not operate according to the script given to him mm -hmm. either by his advisors on foreign relations or his security advisors or advisors of any nature he may want to reverse some of the deeds that were done by uh, president joe biden and that may involve a number of things, including some of the approach more that we've enjoyed with the American nation in the last two years or so. Or even, of course, beyond even the two years. So my take is that um, Trump is quite erratic, is unpredictable, just like his counterpart in Kenya. You, they don't really deal with formal structures. Mm -hmm. He can do anything and... Uh, uh, but overall, it may not change a lot because the template of foreign relations and foreign policy, it is in the interest of America. If we realize that that kind of uh, non-NATO membership is going to be useful to the American nation, he may continue with it. Uh, he may continue with it. Yep. Very well. Let's bring uh, the conversation now to center it at what's happening in our country. And this far, we are seeing uh, people talk about a one-term president of President, uh, uh, of president William Ruto. And uh, much of it is coming from revelations from uh, one-time uh, inside men of Kenya Kwanzaa, like Lofus Malala, who say bottom-up economic plan has always been a pipe dream. And even uh, while, while putting it down on paper, it was just to sell false hope. It is not realistic. When you see such... Revelations come from people like Clofas Malala. Regarding Gashago also takes concern with some of the policies of the regime of the day. Does this sort of rubber stamp that possible outcome of Ruto being a one-term presidency? Well, there are a number of factors that may uh, conspire to deprive him a second term. Mm -hmm. And for me, it may not be even the policy pronouncement. It is the false promises that he made to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And uh, issues of bottom-up, I was personally convinced that it is a good model, but it must be a model that is properly prepared so that as you start improving the lives of those at the bottom of the pyramid, mm -hmm. you do not trample over those who are in the middle of the pyramid so that the pyramid still retains the same shape, 
but the quality of the pyramid improves. Mm -hmm. That was my thinking. So that if you are talking about farmers producing milk, farmers producing certain goods and, and uh, uh, whether maize, fruits or anything, you must think of value addition. You must think of in, in infrastructure, including logistics such as transportation, such that everybody is benefiting at every stage of the ladder. And um, I do not know uh, how they did it. And I don't know how they are doing it now because I'm not part of their team. But one major problem that uh, the current regime had, which I think they should be able to correct uh, even in the intervening period, mm -hmm. is that they took a manifesto and they almost made it that this is now a script for the implementation of the programs. Usually, in any civilized society, you come with your manifesto. Mm -hmm. Then you translate manifesto into a policy document. For example, in 2002, uh, under the Kibaki administration, when we took over, there was the NAC man manifesto, which now we subsequently translated into certain workable documents. Mm -hmm. Those of us in the agriculture sector, we had what we were calling SRA, a strategy for revitalizing agriculture. And that came down from what the Ministry of Planning under the former minister, um, uh, 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 Professor Bita Nyang Nyongo, what we are calling a strategy for wealth creation, uh, which now came down in the agriculture sector. It was revitalizing the agriculture sector. And that we did a paper, 2004-2014. That is what the ministry was using for 10 years. Then from all subsectors, we now compounded into a document we are calling Vision 2030. Oh, really? Yes, 2030. So that we, you are able to, whatever you are doing this year, you know where it is supposed to be next year and so forth up to 20, 2030. It feeds into the larger picture. Into the larger picture. Mm -hmm. Because the larger picture is important, but the small events mm -hmm. at the ground are also important. Because if you are talking about... Um, this being sort of middle mi middle level economy, uh, where manufacturing is important, mm -hmm. as you say, where do you get the goods to manufacture? You get it from the farmer. How do you assist the farmer to produce so that he makes profit to be able to go back to the farm the the the, the, the following year? Mm -hmm. You have to make it affordable for him by improving credit facilitation affordability in terms of fertilizer mm -hmm. and farm inputs and also making it possible for this farmer to transport to the market where the market is that is the industry such incentives huh? those are the incentives mm -hmm. so at times you don't look at one component because at times when you hear the president he talks about fertilizer which fertilizer the other day was fake and he makes it look like fertilizer is the only thing now when he was told by farmers the other sunday in wasingishu that uh, price of maize is so low, 2,500. He talked about fertilizer, which is supposed to be relevant in March. Instead of telling them how they can be in, uh, given an incentive to get a good market. And you know market has two things. The capacity to absorb at the right price and in a timely manner pay them. So all these are simple things. Mm -hmm. But you see at times William Ruto likes complicating stories, stories which are so easy. He makes them look so complicated. Now he has destitute uh, Dr. Karanja in the ministry. But does Dr. Karanja have any time to consult with these officers or he's going to micromanage him from state house? So you are a policy analyst. The failure on the part of the government was not allowing the bottom up yeah. model on paper to be trans to, to be translated into yeah. In actionable policy documents documents which are supported uh -huh. which are supported you know if you start from the base you know normal pyramid as you know is a triangle uh -huh. if you start at the base you are dealing with many people as you move the number of people reduces but these are people are doing something to add value to the person the many people mm -hmm. so as you go to the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. you must be asking yourself at this level what is the most convenient intervention to input into this pyramid? 
so that at the end of the day, those are the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. are still at the top. Mm -hmm. But the quality of life of everybody, everybody is happy. Mm -hmm. But you could be wrong, Waziri. The reason, yeah. reason as to why I'm saying this is yes. that when it comes to the president fulfilling part of his agenda, he yeah. has said... He's doing it. The problem is he never had someone to ampli amplify his voice. He has said when it comes to talking about the achievements of his government, yeah. he was a lonely man. He was a lone voice because yeah. his deputy then regarding Gashag was not really vocal about it. Okay. And perhaps why he's taking refuge in Kindiki that with Kindiki on board, he's gonna clearly communicate and have a better <laughs> outreach on what the government has been doing. Do you find a sense of truth in that allegation by the president? No, you, you, you see, Richard, I think you like me talking about William Ruto. No, not really. You're asking me questions that I will d describe him and I will make him look bad. Do you know why? You heard him say the blame was, <laughs> was Gashagwa. Let's go back. <laughs> Let's go back to 2002. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to 97. Mm -hmm. You see, William Ruto has to look for an excuse. In 2007, his larynx call was 41 against 1. That the worst people in this country is one community. I don't want to name the community. <laughs> Immediately after that, the bad person was Raila, because Raila was planning to take him to Hague. <laughs> that was his rallying call. <laughs> and he was getting some little monies from uh, the system to all the rallies against Raila in all Kalenjin land because he was planning to part ways with Raila. Mm -hmm. Then 20 th in the run up to 2013, he and Uhuru now had a rallying call, mm -hmm. referendum against the Hague. Mm -hmm. Immediately after that, he waited, but impatiently telling people at home that it is he running the government because Uru spends time elsewhere. Immediately after 2017 elections, Ruta came out full throttle. Dynasty against the hustler. After winning the elections, now he starts blaming Rigathi. And, so, and his communication team. And his communication really, yeah. team. <laughs> so when will he accept blame? You know, if you are in a position of leadership, you must accept responsibility when things go wrong. That's why in Japan, Minister of Transport at some stage, when there was a derailment of a train, he committed suicide. He could not face the public. And yet he was not the driver of the train. He was not even the MD of the corporation that runs the trains. So this for Waziri, do you feel that the president has squandered the opportunity to redeem himself by addressing the concerns of the Gen Z, much of which was stemming from not fulfilling promises domiciled in his transformation plan? You know, apart from his scapegoating, uh -huh. he's a liar. Simply that. He's a liar. You remember what in the level, What in, level in of the, a liar is in, he? Pathological liar? Pathological liar. Uh -huh. Habitual liar who has now graduated to pathological liar. Because remember, in the run-up to election, telling us it will be making free calls from every marketplace. And last week, he promised that all heads of cattle in Kenya, uh, uh, running upwards of 22 million, will be vaccinated for free by the government. Which is and okay. for farmers. Yeah. It, oh, used, it used to be done even at Why are you not times. convinced yeah. that it's going to deliver even on what he's pledging today? I hope the vaccine will not be fake. You know, Richard, the vaccine could be fake. And he enjoys when he sees misery in the eyes, in the faces of people. Someone could be wondering, are you a career critic of President Ruto? I'm not a career critic, but you see, mm -hmm. if you give me minced meat, I have to destroy. I don't have to swallow just to make it look good. Let's then talk about who's going to salvage the situation in this country, because now you're taking concern with his leadership and some of his policies. We're looking at a situation whereby yeah. names have been floated. Yes. CJ Maraga, yes. former CJ. Emeritus. Emeritus. Yeah. Equally, we have seen William Tunga, his yeah. name being fronted to yeah. take over in 2027, and yeah. a few other names. And it yeah. begs the question, are you part of that section which also believes the two gentlemen have what it takes to herald new fortunes for this country? Well, there are many Kenyans who qualify. Mm -hmm. But we need to build consensus mm -hmm. so that we also don't make the mistake opposition has been making elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, Ian Kama, for the opposition to win in Botswana, 
he spent a lot of time trying to bring the opposition together because the government has many ways of derailing anything done by the opposition. Mm -hmm. Remember President Moy uh, derailed the opposition in 1992, divided Ford into Ford Kenya and Ford Asili, mm -hmm. created DP as a runaway party. Mm -hmm. In 97, he still had divided Ford Kenya into further LDP, NDP, and Ford Kenya. And Ford Asili disappeared, then DP came, and NPK also came. So there were four presidential candidates against him. And all the candidates in 92 coalesced into one political entity. President Moy would have had his last term in 1992. Mm -hmm. In 1997, when you look at the votes of uh, Mwai Kibaki, uh, Wamalwa Kijana, Charity Ngilu, and Raila Odinga, they would have won against President Moy because they were more than 50%. Mm -hmm. But... The government of the day, and this I'm telling my colleagues in the opposition, mm. be aware that somebody will infiltrate you. So when names are mentioned, I'm happy mm -hmm. that Kenya has a potential of presidential candidates. But presidential candidates are not good enough unless they become presidents. Unless they become presidents. And for them to become presidents, they must tolerate each other. Talking about tolerating each other, yeah. we are looking at probably a Kalonzo presidency. It, yeah. it, it could be in the often. But the question is, look at uh, the choice of friends for Kalonzo. And I want you to measure it from your lenses, <laughs> the quality of his friends that he's trying to consolidate by, by his side mm -hmm. to realize that dream in 2027. We are seeing people like Maina Jenga yeah. of Amani Sasa Foundation, ousted leaders like uh, Ferdinand Waititu, yes. who many believe uh, they are not really careful about their addiction, which is very critical in Kenya's politics. We are seeing other people on their camp yeah. Let, me, uh, let me ask you, I mean, you are a close ally of Kalonzo Musioka. Do you think he's making the right choice of friends if indeed he wants to realize the presidential dream? You, you, <laughs> you know, Richard, mm -hmm. in politics like a home, mm -hmm. you know, like back in the village at your place in uh, Mosbridge mm -hmm. or Kapkoi, there are guys, when you wake up in the morning, <laughs> you find them at your gate. <laughs> and they are happy to be with you. They smile. And you, you cannot Without send, your invitation? Yeah, you cannot send them away. It's an African thing. You had President Museveni the other day saying, there are some guys, they appear at your home. You ask them, uh, where, where are you going? I've come to see you. <laughs> without <laughs> without any... So some of these guys in politics also, you don't send people away. What you need at, to do... At the expense of your future? No, you, you, what you need look, to do... Look, Ferdinand waited to openly endorse in Kalonzo, even before the party itself declares their position yeah. on their flag bearer. Yes. Jeremiah Kioni endorsing... No, it is okay. It's okay. It happens. What we need to do... You see, wh we, when you do conflict management, mm -hmm. they say the most important thing is not to prevent conflict from occurring. Mm -hmm. It is how you resolve it. That is what matters? What matters. And when you resolve conflict that has arisen, it leaves that society stronger than before the conflict arose. Mm -hmm. These are elements of conflict. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know, accept them. You know, leadership is accommodating everybody. Mm -hmm. Leadership is, is, is the capacity to listen mm -hmm. and make sense out of every story. Why did you have this story to tell? And you just don't send him away. You remember saying that you can change the course of the river instead of True. destroying the building. So, you know, everybody has something ingenious. Mm -hmm. Maina Njenga has gone through mm -hmm. the rough and temple of Kenya. So allow him also to be around Kalonzo mm -hmm. because Kalonzo needs all Kenyans. You've mentioned of uh, uh, an empty stomach being a poor political advisor. Uh, now, those <laughs> associating with Kalonzo, Msioka, most of them are those who are in, in, in political... Uh, Morning, people like Clofas Malala, Rigadi Gashagwa. Yeah. Still, would you advise him to embrace such friends who, maybe this is not their true position, maybe it's just because they're in the cold for a while. They could turn against you in the fullness you of know, time. You, you know, leadership is like a train. Mm -hmm. When a train leaves Nairobi for Kitale, mm -hmm. many people will embark on it. Mm -hmm. Some will disembark in Naivasha, some will do, disembark in Nakuru, and others will get in. Mm -hmm. So, in leadership, allow the train to be full of passengers regardless of who embarked when, who disembarked when. Mm -hmm. But if you are so critical, kwa mana unashuka na naivasha, you are not getting to go to the train. Mm -hmm. Kumbe Ryan wants the train up to naivasha, then he goes to Narok. 
then somebody in Naivasha gets in. So the fare is going to be even more than if Ryan had traveled from here to Kitale. In politics, accept people as they come. The, the main responsibility is what roles do you assign them when they come? And when you leave them, how do you leave them? Don't leave them with something bitter in the mouth. Because you never know. On your way back from uh, Kitale to Nairobi, mm -hmm. you may need the same guys to get into the train. Leadership is like that. But William Ruto, this far is a clear example of that when he burns the bridges, you can do away without it, without that bridge. But is he a leader? Oh, he is? That's why he has failed in leadership. You know, you know at times, um, being elected does not make you a leader. Mm -hmm. It is what you do when you are in that position of leadership. So for you, you are clearly on call to Kalonzo Msioka. Many have accused him of being a political watermelon in this country. Yes. This time around, to yeah. get it right, do you pray that he, have, he gets the gift of discernment, political discernment? He can discern them and uh, we'll be able to make those guys busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, Waititu is a nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what do you minor call? Jenga, the ghosts from the past. Don't you think that will be a minus for Kalonzo? But how many people have the same ghosts as Minor and Jenga? What was Ruta accused of when he was taken to Hague? Genocide. And he's still in town. Displacement of communities. Burning of people in Kiamba Church. Don't you think that's selective judgment? Why Ruto? No, I'm telling you, you know, he's the best us. example. Uh -huh. You see, he's, he's our leader. So you, you, we see him there. So all these accusations, some of them are not true. Like there's five accusations against Rigadi. If you picked that template mm -hmm. and you used against any of us, even me, mm -hmm. I might have said things which are tribal one time or the other. Mm -hmm. I might have done something that was demeaning to some individual. Mm -hmm. I might have done things that even at the family level, the family is not happy. Mm -hmm. So at times we become, we judge other people mm -hmm. without asking ourselves, how clean are we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about the president and the need for him to serve first. And yeah. one conduit for him to serve first was by loaning expatriates from uh, the opposition, John Badi, uh, Weekly for Paranya, and, uh, and, and several of them. But this far, do you think it has given him the first lift that he so needed just so to have the calm? Well, at, at least politically, he has, uh, he has scored temporarily. Mm -hmm. But on delivering the vision that he had for Kenyans, has the, the new team inspired confidence in him? Well, well I don't know. Mm -hmm whether he's supposed to inspire confidence in him or he's supposed to inspire them to be productive. Mm -hmm. Because leadership at the level of the president, mm -hmm. you, are, you allow people to use their own capacity to multiply your vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very well. But he has not allowed them. I don't think he has allowed them. Because even when he says he's lonely, the lonely, lonely from what? Because he is the one who goes, lectures them, and he releases people with confusion. You know, when you go to the president, and I've been to the president, that is worth being called the president. <laughs> Kibaki never told us what to do. Anytime we went to brief him, he would ask you questions. How do you want to achieve this? Then you tell him, one, two, three. Where will you get the money? You tell him, this is how to get the money. Or we call Miraria to come and See how we, we can do it. Yes, why doesn't he come here next week? Tuko hapa. So, president is not supposed to give people which project to run. Whether it's Adani, whether it's Shisha, he's not supposed to do that. It is because, in, it, and, and because of the need for that advisory, it's why he did set up the Council of Economic Advisors. Who are advising him wrongly? Which advice now? Education model? Shisha? G2G? Poisoned oil. So if you're, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, if you are the president today, would you do away with that Council of Economic Advisors led by David Ndi? I will not even have it. In the first place? Every ministry has advisors. Mm -hmm. Every ministry has serious civil servants. Mm -hmm. Even this issue of advisor came uh, the other day because we are copying American model. Mm -hmm. Advisors are not even supposed to be known. Because how can you be a advisor if you are known? Because you will be influenced in a bar. So that you are devising us, not according to your knowledge, but according to the bar talk. I will not have any of them. You don't For aspire example, to join that team? No, I don't have to advise the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in future, when the president has ministers, that's why they say deputy president is the principal advisor 
to the president. Once the president has ministers, 22 of them, mm -hmm. and they are PSS, and they have senior officers, mm -hmm. almost every ministry has what we call, what we are calling agriculture secretary or director of agriculture. Mm -hmm. Those people, when they sit mm -hmm. and they are objective, mm -hmm. they will come up with something that can go up all the way to the office of the president through a cabinet memo. Mm -hmm. That cabinet memo will be processed in the presence of 22 ministers, the president and his deputy, and will be taken to parliament. Parliamentary committee will also process, and also parliament as very educated people nowadays. During our time, more than 100 people did not have university education. But today, although my worry is that some of the people who say they have gone to university, mm -hmm. they might have gone to university, but they don't have Actually, right the other paper. day, over 200 bunge staff yeah. were, were, were flagged because of fake credentials. Even some of these were bunge. Some elected leaders also have fake papers. Yeah. I'm worried about Muthuse, whether he's a lawyer. Which school did he go? You remember uh, uh, Emeritus uh, Professor uh, Dr. William Mutunga said, school of law should strip him of the diploma and uh, the university, I don't know which university did he go. I hope not the University of Nairobi, where you and I went. Mm -hmm. Though some of those degrees are not, uh, are not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are fake. Mm -hmm. So imagine Funga Stab to have 200 people, and that's the center of power. Glad that you've raised that up because it now begs the question, the place of merit in public service in Kenya. Yeah. Now the president is at crossroads on the peak for CS Interior. Several nom names have been fronted. Yeah. And he's Give me the names. And he's, uh, we've seen people like Boynet, uh, Nur Gabo, <laughs> Junet Mohammed, Aden Duale are part of that list of uh, possible uh, people to ascend to that sea, uh, docket. Yeah. And it begs the question, if indeed we are a nation that uh, aspires to have meritocracy take the front row seat, yeah. why should it be a, a, a difficult task for the president to name the CS Interior in record time? You see, CS Interior is somebody who has support of institutions of leadership mm -hmm. or, or management of affairs of Kenya. Mm -hmm. If I was to advise the president, ECS Interior should be one, Wycliffe Msalia Mudavadi. Mm -hmm. Then Minister of Foreign Affairs is given to somebody else, perhaps Rebecca Miano. Mm -hmm. And that one of Rebecca Miano, Junette can go there. <laughs> Junette Mohammed? Yeah, Junette Mohammed. You cannot take Junette Mohammed to Interior. Really, do you trust that uh, that institution should be given to somebody like Junaid Mohammed? Yeah, let him sue me. You've been telling me about so many suits. The person who should go to interior is weekly Musalia Mudavadi. Not because he has he's done a lot of uh, logistics in terms of, uh, or education in terms of issues of interior. But his mien, his attitude, his capacity will allow him to make things of interior to move smoothly. Uh -huh. Even this abduction may be reduced because he's worried. He's somebody who lived during when systems were still systems. He was a minister in Moist government at the age of 30. He was, a, he was my minister at some stage uh -huh. when I was assistant minister for agriculture. Then he was minister in Kibaki 1, uh -huh. uh, Kibaki 2, and he was minister... He did not become minister Uru's time, no. So he has a lot of experience. And he's also a good man. He's you know, awesome. I like talking of good people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kindiki did it, but uh, Musalia can do better. Waje ni kuambi. Musalia can do better. That point, we cross over to a brand new segment that you all have embraced so quick. That is Hero's Corner with Kipruto Arab Kirua. Today on the show, who is our segment? I'm on who Mombasa is our Shuja? I mean, I'm on Mombasa Road. Oh, Mombasa Road. All the way to Makweni. Uh huh. A young man was born 1954 to some parents who were local hunters, anikatharas. I'll come to talk about Mamboga. Ah, si Mamboga. You Mamboga, you marry because crazy. Yeah. I'll come. Who can you buy? You took Yeah. In Makweni, 1954. 1954. Uh huh. He went to school. 
and he's a good scholar. Mm -hmm. He has, uh, in fact, he's my hero because of huge humility. Genuine credentials? Credentials. Mm -hmm. uh, he has told many people, mm -hmm. including Metangula. You know, I like mentioning people, mm -hmm. including Metangula and many other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, even Mother Karua has been uh, his student. Mm -hmm. And uh, despite all that, mm -hmm. he had time to be with us in civil society. And which culminated in the formation of government of NAC, of which he was a minister. Mm -hmm. So I served with him when he was minister for environment, I was minister for agriculture. And uh, he did well. He went back home after losing elections in 2007, just like me. And the people of Makwene gave him a chance to be their governor. Really? Their first governor. Then some MCS who wanted money and behaving like warthogs wanted to impeach him. That impeachment turned into a public discourse where the people of Makwene were asked whether to dissolve the county government or not. He stood the tide of the time and accepted dissolution of the Makwene County Assembly and of course the leadership of Makwene. But president, president at that time said no. That's President Uru Kenyatta. In the run in the run up to 2018 17 elections, all those MCS lost <laughs> except one. That is Professor Kibuta Kibwana. Kibuta Kibwana. He's gone back to school as a professor of law at Daystar University. And back to he, the lecture halls. He lecture halls. From the top seat of a governor. Yeah. Or even minister. That is one Kenyan that I respect and uh, I give him a lot of um, room mm -hmm. and uh, he's a good thinker mm -hmm. but full of humility. He has mm -hmm. not changed. No office has changed him. He has changed many offices but no office has changed him to be arrogant. He's still an approachable guy? In a time. If I called him, you will pick my call. Uh, don't threaten me. I can easily call him. <laughs> really? Yeah. So you find that he epitomizes, he epitomized humility Lead, in Humility, service. in leadership is uh -huh. humility. You know, you, know, you, you know, my late mother never went to school. Oh, really? But he used to tell me, the moment you know other people are as intelligent as you are, if not more, that's the time I will know that you're intelligent. And she didn't go to school. When we do research nowadays, you have to identify areas of further research, admitting that whatever research you have done, there's still more research to be done and new knowledge will be found. You are not the ultimate person. Your mother should actually be our hero on one of these segments <laughs> soon enough. Yeah. All right, we wait for that time to come. But for Kibuta Kibwana, yeah. so you find that history will, have a, will be kind to him in the fullness of time. Yes. He'll be in the right annals of history? Indeed, indeed. And uh, in fact, the challenge I give to him, <laughs> he should not overstay his invitation to the space mm -hmm. that we have to make change in this country. Mm -hmm. He should be part of the wheel or those who will be moving the wheel for change in Kenya. Do you think he'll just have a footnote on an entire chapter when history is written? He may have two chapters. Two chapters. One about humility mm -hmm. and the other one about intellect. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much for your service to the nation. That is uh, Professor Kibuta Kibwana. Really applaud you as a country. Thank you so much for slating time for this production, Waziri. It's my pleasure. Uh -huh. And say hi to all the heroes in, make, in the making. All heroes in the making. Yes. Including maybe Mutuse. <sighs> All right, until we meet next time, enjoy the rest of your viewing.